Hello guys, welcome back to Jam Jam Crypto. I'm your host, Jamie, here in Seoul, Korea. The reason why I'm here is because, very fortunately, I got invited by the Aptos team here to experience one of the biggest Aptos events that they have ever hosted. Well, I know the ecosystem has been vibrant. There are different projects from, you know, DeFi and GameFi and payment, probably because of the low latency where traders can trade without any delay. Gamers can play games without any hiccup or without skipping a beat. I'm going to talk to the projects inside and see any more advantages that we need to know about Apto. So let's hit it. colorful toy here but what does it do? So all of our toys that we make they unlock digital experiences so this one in particular every single day you tap in oh. and we have a special competition for seven days if you tap the toy straight for seven days you win a grand prize of actually quite a lot of money. Oh but really? All of our toys that we make we made toys for Adidas, Dead Mouse, Super Plastic, all of them have these digital experiences built in, and this one's very, very special today for the Aptos experience. Oh wow, so it's like the one and only for the Aptos experience yes. in Seoul. Only 200. I gotta open my phone, I'm gonna tap Make sure you align it with the rainbow. It's actually easy, yep. so yep. tap the link. I can see the NFC jellybean.xyz, but just have it here now. Do I need to download some app or no, everything you're just here. gonna accept those terms. Okay, cool. And then make sure you claim this. So you'll have to just log in to claim. And okay, so I'm claiming my Aptos Experience NFT. Cool. You're spinning a wheel. Okay, that's it. We'll see if you won. I have a one song oh, ABD. ABD. So you won. That's money. You won. Holy money. shit. ABD, does it mean a common? Yeah. So I What do you do and uh, what project do you work on? So I'm the co-founder and CMO of Overlay. So what we do is we have creator economy tools, uh, essentially uh, protecting content that's uploaded online. So to determine what an organization can or can't do with that content. So essentially it's intellectual property rights uh, protection, content credentials, image provenance, um, and really fighting deep fakes and really understanding from a fan perspective what's real or what's synthetic or what's fake. Oh, so I've got a question for you. So as an everyday user on Instagram, if I'm just like traveling and posting selfie of myself, enjoying food, like why would I, like what's the purpose? Why would I want to overlay that image on Instagram? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I'll give you some context as well. So we're filmmakers, photographers by trade. So naturally that was, you know, we were trying to solve our own problem of our work getting stolen and used and repurposed without uh, our permission. So essentially, when we were building this, we said we're going to help the professional creators who are putting their time effort into mastering the craft and the skills. But then we found out anybody uploading content online, uh, it can be used and scraped to create generative outputs that you, know, you lose complete control when you upload, when you distribute your content, um, and it can be manipulated and changed with your likeness. So it can have your voice, um, it can showcase you directly. Uh, but maybe saying something that's completely against the values of what you stand for. So hungry. It's my time to eat, man. For a second, I thought that that banana was a cake. Like the way they present it, kind of looks like a cake, right? Hi there. So I'm here speaking to. Christy, uh, leading Korea at Aptos Labs. Well, I can see that Aptos is really big in the Korean market. Mm. Is there a reason why that Korean so into Aptos? What's so mesmerizing about the Korean market? Korea is a very interesting and really, um, I mean, amazing country and market. So uh, in terms of uh, adoption of Web3, I think um, Korea has been really leading across regions in the world um, because like, uh, I guess three reasons. So first, I think definitely uh, enterprises here are very active in crypto and adopting Web3 to their existing or new uh, businesses. 
And second, I think um, the vibrant startup ecosystem here, not just in Web3, but has been in uh, Web1 web and Web2. So startups are really active in finding new business models and trying new technology. And so a lot of developers here, uh, I think, are helping to adopt Web3. And I would say definitely uh, third would be consumers and users. So uh, users in Korea are really like finding new trends and uh, setting new trends in uh, Asian, basically. Yeah, I wouldn't say like DGEN, but like, I mean, not just in Web3, right? Yes. Um, so, so they're like DGENs in every sector and every industry, you know, like K-pop uh, has yes, been really yeah, popular in the past uh, five to 10 years. So I think uh, it's the reason why uh, Web3 and the new technology could be really adopted to, to general users in Korea. Not if not mass adopted yet, uh, I think uh, it'll be just a matter of time. Because I see Korean people will keep making that joke, one APT stands for one apartment. So that's why they're so into it. But I'm just wondering if you guys have any plans to expand the ecosystem <laughs> to other countries? If so, like what is the strategy that you're adopting? Yeah, so uh, I think, uh, I mean, we are generally like regional agnostic, uh, sector agnostic, but like I, I would say definitely where opportunities of uh, having more developers and community on, on Aptos will be, that would be our uh, key regions. So I would say definitely APEC, like a broader APEC, um, because we are seeing like countries like Japan, Vietnam, there are more people trying out uh, Web3. So uh, actually, so Japan, there are more like conglomerates and enterprises adopting Web3. And uh, Vietnam, I see a lot of developers, like indie developers and I mean, startup teams are uh, trying new technologies uh, of uh, not just Aptos, but general, you know, Web3. Just got myself a drink. Cheers, everyone, because I have been talking so much to different projects and engage with uh, different people. I'm also heading to the uh, after party which is just like a 10 minutes walk from this venue. This is much appreciated because like Seoul is so huge and everything could be quite scattered. I definitely love the arrangement here and I'll show you guys the vibe in a bit. So today is the second day of the event. I'm standing outside of the venue and apparently there are different projects and new speakers joining the event. So hopefully I can get to talk to each and one of them. One more thing I find it really cool is that the Oculus Core Wallet is doing an, a personalized and engraved wallet. So I'm probably gonna do it because I didn't get to do it yesterday. So I'll show you how, how the event looks like. So let's go. So there's this engraved card from Oculus. Apparently they're offering it for free. Uh, can you engrave it? Or? Yeah, right here. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So this is the card and you can take whatever design you want. It's kind of name here because it kind of takes a while to get Oh, okay, okay, okay. This one is interesting. Why would you say crypto stuff? <laughs> well, I think I'm going to choose this logo here. Uh, a money sign flying other than crypto stuff. That's the dollar sign logo. And then the next one will be Gems and Crypto. Yay! So I just bought my car. You can do a little close up here. Gems Gem Crypto. Yay! And the dollar sign. Dollar's flying. Let's go. So I'm here speaking to. Uh, this is YK from Miracle Trade. I would like to know what does Miracle Trade do? Uh, could you explain to our audience in just a few simple sentences like what is the project doing? So, Miracle Trade is the uh, first ever gamify perplex. So, we have combined the secure, highly performant trading engine with uh, more immersive and engaging elements of gamif gamification to make the overall leverage trading experience more immersive and engaged. Uh, I just wonder if you have any like stacks that you could share, like how the game gamification can improve the user experience and overall. So to give you a little bit of background, uh, we are focusing on the long tail casual segment of traders. 
So this is uh, this is very different from other perplexes with their complex indicators, the complex uh, onboarding experience. We try to simplify all of that to make sure that trading is as accessible and as, as entertaining as possible. In this context, when we so to give you a profile of our users, our, our users make us uh, more frequent trades and uh, with lesser collateral with higher leverage. So there are these uh, DGen enjoyers. And what we are seeing is that uh, apart from trading, the users can come into our platform and uh, play around with the gamified elements. So, so they can either get rewards from the missions or they can upgrade their items or they can uh, break their item back items to shards, which is like uh, in-game currency for like item upgrade and stuff. What we have been seeing is uh, we have seen 30% of the users come into our platform, not to trade, but to just engage with the gamified elements. Wow. So if you think about positions, if you think about trading positions, not everybody make, like changes their position every day, right? If you have a great entry, you want to see how it plays out, and et cetera, et cetera. But seeing that 30% of our daily active users are just come in and really interact with the platform through the gamified elements, I think, tells a lot about how gamification has helped uh, our user engagement. And I know users can trade like commodities and uh, like Forex and yep. stuff up to a thousand X leverage, yep. right? That's yep. pretty yep. legion. Yes, yes. I wonder like how many users are trading crypto? How many users are trading traditional assets? So it really, uh, it really depends on the day. So uh, during the exciting Yen Carry uh, unwind, uh, JPY was definitely the number one volume oh, okay. uh, for a very long of time, extended amount of time. Like sometimes uh, there, there are, I mean, we can't disclose like his profile, but there are some Japanese traders who are who, who explicitly come into our platform for Forex mm -hmm. because trading JPY is very difficult for them. Oh. JPY USD trade is very difficult for them in their country and we provide up to 1,000 X of leverage. So it really depends on market conditions. Uh, you know, if you have like new listings, the listed, uh, the listed assets are usually the top traders. But at the same time, if there are these macro volatility, then uh, people definitely trade a lot of uh, commodities and also uh, Forex. So it really depends. Yeah, so I'm here speaking to... Hi, this is Alejandro. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Nameless. Okay, well, so what does Nameless do? Because I've been seeing videos that you've been putting QR code throughout the event. Like, how does it work? And walk, walk me through the process. Absolutely, we do all kinds of things. Uh, first and foremost, we're event organizers. We work with a lot of brands um, and event organizers in New York City, putting together memorable experiences for brands, helping them show that there's a community around their events. Uh, most recently, we've been building the Nameless platform. What that is, it's an RSVP mechanism for the events that we're throwing. Um, it creates an added layer of data capture. And as you said, we put together a, a summer street festival every Saturday, called it Bowery Land. And we did a digital scavenger hunt where there were QR codes available all over the block. And we were encouraging attendees to collect them, gain points, and they could enter raffles with those points. So it was an experiment in event engagement, uh, vendor interaction that we were running. I think that's what you were talking about. Yeah, I love that. So which city that you are like putting out all these QR codes in, in the event? Yeah, it's New York City. Um, that's where our team is founded and based out of. Uh, but we've also done events in Miami. We did an activation in Spain, in Mallorca, Spain. And uh, we're looking into doing something in uh, Tokyo in October. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay. So uh, any other like upcoming prizes users can look forward to? Like what are the bigger prizes? Yeah, absolutely. So right now we're actually doing an activation. We're selling a streetwear jersey. It's a combination of New York City streetwear and Korean streetwear. Um, if you purchase one of these, you are able to become a content creator of your own oh. jersey. And oh, so like if you share pictures, images, videos of you wearing the jersey in your favorite city, you'll be able to earn crypto rewards for it. So that's at the forefront. We're doing it right now. We'll be here for the next couple of days. Well, guys, there were still many projects I didn't get the chance to interview. And there were some major announcements during the event, including Libre tokenized funds on Aptos and the launch of Aptos Builds, which is a one-to-one -one support hub and builder stack for Aptos builders. And let's not forget, Arthur Hayes is now one of the biggest Aptos supporters. Honestly, I didn't expect much before attending the Aptos Experience event, but 
After seeing how diverse the ecosystem is and how many actual builders are working on innovative and fun projects, I have to say the chain is slowly winning me over. My channel has never covered aptos before, but after this conference, I'll definitely be diving deeper into the ecosystem. Once again, a huge thank you to Aptos for inviting me to witness all the progress they have made over the past two years. It was so honored to be there, and I'm sure there are even more exciting things coming soon. Be sure to follow them on their socials for updates and follow me on Twitter and Instagram because I'm always posting there too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.